gunfire echoed through the halls, causing chaos and panic as students and teachers scrambled for safety. Within minutes, Ethan Crumbly killed four students and injured seven others, including a teacher. His spree ended when school resource officers apprehended him without further incident. Like Colt Gray, Ethan was quickly taken into custody and faced serious charges, including four counts of first-degree murder and terrorism. The aftermath of the Oxford shooting saw not only Ethan's prosecution but also legal repercussions for his parents, James and Jennifer Crumbly. Much like Colt Gray's father, Colin Gray, they were charged with involuntary manslaughter. Their charges stemmed from their alleged failure to prevent the attack, including purchasing the gun Ethan used and ignoring clear signs of their son's deteriorating mental state. Text messages and other evidence revealed that Ethan's parents were aware of his troubling behavior leading up to the shooting, yet they did not intervene effectively. Ethan Crumbly was charged as an adult under Michigan law, similar to how Colt Gray is being treated in Georgia. His parents' trial is ongoing, and many legal experts believe that their conviction could set a precedent for future cases involving parental responsibility in school shootings. The Crumbly case highlights a growing legal trend where not only the perpetrators but also those responsible for their upbringing, especially when negligence or enabling behavior is involved, are being held accountable. In Colt Gray's case, the charges against his father, Colin, bear a similar legal weight. In both instances, the fathers provided their sons access to deadly weapons despite clear warnings of the danger they posed. Colin Gray's actions, in allowing his son to possess an AR-style rifle, were not only negligent but also reckless, given that Colt had already been investigated for making threats. The parallels between the Crumbly case and the Gray case are striking and raise important questions about parental responsibility in an era of rising school shootings. As the legal proceedings against Colt and his father unfold, it's likely that their fates will be closely tied to the outcome of similar cases like Ethan Crumbly's. The involvement of Colt's father in the purchase of the weapon and his failure to act on the FBI's warning will be central to the prosecution's case. Meanwhile, the defense will likely focus on Colt's mental state, his age, and whether he had the capacity to understand the full gravity of his actions. Another case that bears resemblance to Colt Gray's is that of Nicholas Cruz, the perpetrator of the 2018 Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in Parkland, Florida. Cruz was 19 when he opened fire at his former high school, killing 17 people and injuring 17 more. Like Colt, Cruz had a troubled background, including previous encounters with law enforcement and signs of potential violence that were overlooked. In Cruz's case, both school officials and law enforcement had received multiple warnings about his violent tendencies, yet no substantial action was taken to prevent the tragedy. Nicholas Cruz was charged with 17 counts of first-degree murder and 17 counts of attempted murder. He ultimately pled guilty to all charges and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. While Cruz's case ended with a guilty plea, the question of whether the system could have done more to prevent the tragedy still looms large. Much like with Colt Gray, the role of parents, schools, and law enforcement in identifying and acting on warning signs has become a focal point of public debate. As Colt Gray's case proceeds, his defense may also draw on precedents like Cruz's, particularly in arguments related to mental health and the influence of his upbringing. In both cases, the perpetrators were young, had troubled family lives, and had shown signs of violent tendencies that were not adequately addressed. The defense may argue that Colt, at just 14 years old, lacked the maturity to fully comprehend the consequences of his actions, similar to how Cruz's attorneys argued that his mental health issues diminished his culpability. On the other hand, the prosecution will likely emphasize the premeditation involved in Colt's actions, as well as the fact that he had been previously investigated for making threats. The fact that his father provided him with the weapon despite these threats will be a central aspect of the case against both Colt and Colin Gray. Prosecutors may argue that this level of negligence rises to the level of criminal liability for Colin and that Colt's actions, while committed at a young age, were nonetheless deliberate and calculated. Public reaction to these cases has been swift and strong, 
with many calling for stricter gun control laws and increased accountability for parents and guardians who enable violent behavior. The debate over gun control in the United States has been reignited by each new school shooting, with both sides of the political spectrum offering different solutions. Some advocate for stricter background checks and limitations on the types of firearms that can be purchased, while others emphasize the importance of mental health interventions and school safety measures. In the wake of the Appalake High School shooting, community leaders and policymakers have begun to grapple with these same questions. The tragedy has spurred renewed calls for legislation that would prevent minors from accessing firearms and hold parents more accountable when they do. Many advocates argue that if Colin Gray had been more responsible in securing his weapons, the shooting could have been prevented. Others contend that the FBI's earlier investigation into Colt should have resulted in more serious consequences, such as removing firearms from the household. One potential legislative outcome from this case could be the implementation of stricter red flag laws, which allow law enforcement to temporarily remove firearms from individuals who are deemed a danger to themselves or others. While Georgia already has some measures in place, critics argue that they are not stringent enough and that more robust laws could have prevented the Appalake shooting. Additionally, the role of mental health in school shootings continues to be a topic of discussion. Many school shooters, including Colt Gray, have exhibited signs of distress or behavioral issues prior to their attacks, but these signs often go unaddressed due to lack of resources or intervention. Some experts believe that investing more in mental health services for students, including counseling and early intervention programs, could help prevent future tragedies. In Colt's case, it remains to be seen whether his mental health will play a significant role in his defense, but it is likely to be a factor that is explored during the trial. The Appalake High School shooting has left the community of Winder, Georgia, and the nation at large, grappling with deep questions about responsibility, accountability, and prevention. As the trial of Colt Gray and his father unfolds, the legal system will not only be tasked with determining their guilt but also with addressing the broader societal issues that contribute to such tragedies. The outcome of this case will likely set important legal precedents for future school shootings, particularly in how courts handle the intersection of juvenile offenders, parental responsibility, and gun access. In the end, the lives lost in the Appalake High School shooting cannot be restored, but the legal proceedings offer a path toward accountability and justice for the victims. The families of Mason Sherahorn, Christian Angulo, Christina Iry, and Richard Aspinwall are seeking answers and closure, and the community is looking to the legal system to provide it. As the world watches this case, it is clear that the tragic events of September 4, 2024, will have a lasting impact on the legal landscape surrounding school shootings and gun control in the United States.